Welcome back. In the last video, I finished uh, right on diminishing marginal rate of substitution, the definition of it, and today we'll just talk about this graph and uh, with respect to uh, marginal rate of substitution and degree of substitutability and best affordable choices. So without further ado, let's get started. So this is a figure showing the diminishing marginal rate of substitution of wood for a t-shirt. And you can see at point C, we are willing to give up two t-shirts for one more unit of wood. So the marginal rate of substitution here is 2. Now at point G, we are willing to give up half a t-shirt for one more unit of good. So the marginal rate of substitution is 1 half. Now how I actually got these numbers, 2 and 1 half, is I used rise over run, something that you should have learned in high school. What I did is I drew a tangent on point C. Uh, let's look at C. So I drew a tangent on point C, and I used rise over run. So for this line, it will be... Uh, 10 minus 0 for uh, representing y2 minus y1 over uh, 5 minus 0, which is representing x2 minus x1. So 10 minus 0 over 5 over minus 0, that is 10 over 5, which is equal to 2. You can do the same thing for g, and by looking at this graph, you calculate that on your own. Now, the degree of substitutability. What it is, is... Uh, it reveals the degree of substitutability between two goods. So, uh, I'm just going to talk about the indifference curves for ordinary goods, perfect substitutes, and perfect complements. So, what you got to really focus on here is the shapes. The shape reveals the degree of substitutability between two goods. For ordinary goods, we have a nice curved line. So, an example of this would between two goods as t-shirt and wood, like we've been talking about, we consider these as ordinary goods. So then the degree of substitutability uh, would give us a curved, uh, a curved shape of the indifference curve. Now for perfect substitutes, uh, the line is just a straight, pa straight parallel line. And uh, good substitutes would be Big Mac and Quarter Pounder for me, but may differ for you. So for perfect substitutes, substitutes the shape is a straight line. Now for perfect complements, for example, like iPod and earbuds, you can't have an iPod without earbuds or else the iPod will become useless. The shape is uh, L-shaped, so when you see an L-shaped uh, L shaped difference curve, then you know right away that it represents perfect complements. Now we're going to talk about best affordable choice and then we'll just end our video. So the best affordable choice. The consumer's best affordable choice is on the budget line, on the highest attainable indifference curve and it has a marginal rate of substitution between two goods equal to the relative price of the two goods. And we already knew all this from what we did in the last couple of videos. Now in this, uh, in this figure, the best affordable point is C. Now at point F, we buy more t-shirts and less wood. That, that is obvious because, well, it's up here next to the 10 and uh, for t-shirts and it's next to the 0 for wood. So at F, we buy more t-shirts and less wood. At point H, we buy less t-shirts and more wood. So we're indifferent between F, I, H, and, but we prefer C to FIH because FIH they're on the same indifference curve they're on indifference curve IO but we would prefer C to points F I and H because C is on a higher indifference curve so on the same budget line we would prefer point C to point F and H because point F and H are technically on a lower indifference curve than point C so that's that. So at point F, our marginal rate of substitution is greater than the relative price. And at H, our marginal rate of substitution is less than the relative price. And at C, our marginal rate of substitution is equal to the relative price. Now remember, how we find the relative price is something that we did in one of the past videos, uh, which is here. So in this case, PW over PT, the price of wood over the price of t-shirt, is the price is the relative price of wood in terms of t-shirt. So we would use this as our relative price down down, uh, down here. And they will all be the same because the, the, the price for wood and the price of t-shirts didn't really change, right? So then the relative price will be the same. But the marginal rate of substitution, on the other hand, 
they will change because at point F, if we do the rise over run trick that we learned just then, it will give us a different number than at point H, uh, which will give us a different uh, MRS curve than point F because uh, they will, we will be using different rise over run numbers to calculate the MRS. And that's all I want to go through in this video. Uh, next video, we'll just talk about a change in price and a change in income. And other than that, please rate, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, please check out our social media if you haven't already. Follow, tweet. Uh, but other than that, uh, please rate, comment, and subscribe. And thanks for watching. See you guys next time.